Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today we're talking in AP Macroeconomics about the short-run aggregate supply curve and the long-run aggregate supply curve. We're just going to jump right into this. So what is it? It's a supply schedule showing the level of real output that firms will produce at each and every price level. There's long-run and there's short-run, just like there is in microeconomics. So before we get into the curves, let's talk about the difference between long and short-run in macroeconomics. So in macroeconomics, long run is def defined as a period in which nominal wages and other resource prices match changes in the price level. And I kind of just say this, resource prices adjust to inflation. Meaning during the business cycle, if the uh, economy is slowing down, then resource prices like electricity and other things are going to start to go down as the demand for them decreases. In the long run, these resource prices adjust and we'll actually make sure that we go back to our full employment level. On the other side, if we're in an expansion time period and a lot more of the resources are going to be used, then those contracts can be negotiated and now those workers or the electrical company are going to start to increase their prices to match. And so that's going to be during our inflationary times. And so now we go back again to full employment. Short run is a period in which nominal wages and other resource prices do not adjust. And so it's going to be upward sloping. So let's talk about the why is it upward sloping. It comes down to per unit cost. Because again, price level is not just a change in price, but it's the overall changes in prices. So per unit production costs are total input cost divided by unit cost, essentially average cost from microeconomics. So in general, as more goods are being produced, resources become more scarce. We've already hired the workers, we've already used the raw resources, and so the prices for those goods are going to start to increase or going to be harder to obtain. So the way I phrase it is, in order to overcome the opportunity cost of doing business, they need to charge more. And this happens in several places, not just one industry. We could say that in general, the aggregate, the all-encompassing supply, has changed for the economy since, again, it's upward sloping. It's still dealing with opportunity cost. Now, I don't know how much this is tested on the AP exam anymore, but there is uh, different concepts of this. So the full employment curve is going to be about kind of on, right about here. You can see my little arrow right there so that's going to be about where the full employment curve would be that's going to be our lras which we'll talk about later so typically speaking this is referred to the keynesian port it's really flat below this and the idea is that there's a large excess amount of resources namely like workers available and so if you're really far below full employment because the resources are so readily available, if you want me to, as a business owner, to increase my production, I have a plethora of resources available and I don't need to really pay them that much more. They're just happy for a job. Kind of think Great Depression era unemployment levels. On the other side, it gets really steep beyond full employment. And this is based on the classical theory of economics. It's actually where we get the LRAS from. And the idea is that all the resources are being used by the economy already, and so we can't produce any more. And so if the aggregate demand curve shifts, we can't do anything else. We are maxed out. And this is when you get hyperinflation. Again, I kind of think uh, Germany in 1940s had true hyperinflation. Just the economy was tapped out, and yet we needed to, or they wanted to produce more stuff. This can be because of shortage of resources and simply the companies can't respond. So in order to dissuade consumers, we just got to increase our prices to hopefully slow down the economy. So again, these terms are referred to as Keynes or classical. Uh, if you hear the term sticky wages, that's actually a term Keynes himself used back in the 1930s. So that is associated with the flat portion of this. So during that time, uh, you'd have little to no change in the price level or inflation and pretty large changes to uh, unemployment levels and real output. That's about what uh, called Ward asks. Most of the time, we just have an upward sloping aggregate supply curve. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So what can shift the aggregate supply curve? Well, there's three determinants. Change in input prices, electricity, labor inputs, those kinds of things. 
changes in productivity, which again is output per unit of input, how much can you produce, and then legal institutional uh, changes, so new legislation that impacts the uh, from the government, uh, taxes, subsidies, those kinds of things. Now what I like to do is I would like to simplify the concept with this equation. Productivity times the resources equals the ability to produce or the aggregate supply curve. So what would this be? Well, if my productivity, I'll just say like it, it's a one unit. I can produce one unit per hour, day, just simple numbers. If the input prices change, let's say the input prices decrease, the workers' wages decrease, whatever else it is, then I can hire more workers, which means my resources have increased. So I have my productivity of one times a now larger resource, which means the ability to produce is that much larger. Or instead, if there's a change of productivity, things like um, higher quality uh, capital, higher uh, new technology comes out. Those would be two great examples. That changes productivity. So now the same number of resources can produce X amount more, hence the ability to produce in Increases. So I do like this because it simplifies a lot of the conversations. The government subsidizes. I have more money. Great. Then I can ob obtain more resources. You can kind of plug into this equation. So I really do like to use this one. And you'll see that uh, later on. The, the long-run aggregate supply curve, it's significant because it is going to be our definition or our, our identifier of when full employment occurs. That is because... The LRAS is our graphical version of the potential real output. And again, the potential real output occurs when you are at the natural rate of unemployment. Hence, this real GDP is associated with full employment. And we're going to want that later in our class. Why is it vertical? Because in the long run, wages and other resource prices adjust to that level. Prices will go up or they'll go down. And we'll talk about this in later lectures. So overall, what can happen in the long run? The price level can change. What cannot happen? A change in real output unless the LRAS actually shifts. And we'll talk more about that later. For right now, it doesn't shift. Which means overall, um, because the resource prices change, there's not as much incentive for businesses to um, for profit because if they charge more inflation, then eventually their resource prices will also be adjusted is the idea behind this. So again, really quickly, the differences between long and short run. In the short run, any changes to the input prices, um, legal prices, whatever else, that can shift. If it's temporary or permanent, that is a change. Oil prices change for whatever reason. Well, those prices can come back down. That'll be a temporary change. So a change in the price of oil increases. That's going to shift the AS, that'd be short run aggregate supply or aggregate supply to the left. However, the oil price can come back down. So that'd be a temporary shift. So it's only going to shift the SRAS. On the other side, we have the LRAS. Any change of the previous can still impact the LRAS. Here's the difference. It has to be a permanent change. So a new technology that comes out that speeds up production, that technology doesn't go away. That just becomes the new norm, which means the fully employed resources can produce more stuff. So this would shift the LRAS. Here's the thing. If the LRAS shifts, the SRAS has to shift also. If it's an increase or decrease, they both shift in the same direction. So if the LRAS shifts, the short run will also shift in the same direction. So if you need to review the ASAD graph, definitely do so. But until next time.